All right, friends, I'm sitting to the corner today just to, I don't know, have a different position. And today we are painting this gorgeous landscape with a lovely sunset background. We've got some palms, some bushes, some trees. We're trying to use variations of values so that we can create some more three-dimensional looks. So let's get started. This is so fun. All right, friends. So today we're starting with our Academy paper. This is a seven by 10 block. And this is kind of the inspiration. I was painting outside the other night, did a really rough version of this, but let's go ahead and do a more fancy version with some more details today. So what I really love about this is that it's got a bright sunset and that's gonna be a fun sky. I've got this quarter inch flat wash brush that I'm using today for some of the details. I'm gonna dip that in water. Now you can use round or flat brushes, whatever you choose. And you know what? Actually, we're gonna be doing kind of a half of the sky here and the other half will be the land piece with all of the details. So I'm going to leave a border as well. You can tape it if you want to, but I like to just kind of leave that really loose and rough border. I think it looks artistic and fun. So I'm grabbing my Windsor yellow. It's kind of this cadmium bright orangey yellow. And you know what? Let's go ahead and use this larger flat brush. So we're going to start painting on essentially some water to do a wet on wet technique for our sky. And this is a three quarter inch flat and all of these supplies will be linked below as well as my Windsor Newton watercolor paints here I have on my palette. And we're just gonna have a lot of fun today. So you don't want too much water. You want it to glisten on the page, but not have puddles. And I'm just carefully going around my border here, not too carefully, just trying to you know be aware of the space I wanna keep without color. So I'm just adding in my yellow first. Now, why do we put water down first? It's going to give us this wonderful ability to be able to blend our colors together. So you can see the paint is already spreading, it's diffusing, and when you're ready, start adding in some orange. I'm gonna add some more right here. And you're gonna get, without wet, you know, on the paper first, you're gonna get this blockiness of color that is not going to blend into lovely um, combinations of the colors. I've got this pink I put on next. We are going to end with blue. If you were to put yellow and then blue, you would get a green, which is not great for your sky. So, but if you add in blue with the pink, you're gonna create, create some purple and that's also beautiful and that's also realistic to your sunset or sunrise. So just something to keep in mind. So right now, I just added really light layers of this paint and I'm just brushing back and forth essentially trying to blend those colors together. I think I need some more blue here. It's kind of fading into nothing. And remember things we're, are going to dry about one shade lighter. So it's just something to keep in mind depending on how bright you want everything to be. So let your sky start to dry and we're gonna start adding that basic wash for the ground. And I've got a really lovely color. This is, we've got sap green, but I, what I put down before is called a green gold and it's got so much yellow in it. So we've got these contrasts between the really light green and that medium green as well. And I'm just going back and forth, adding in this part. Remember, basic washes, so you really don't have to be too careful, don't have to be too worried about it because we will add details later. And that's when we start to be more concerned about you know our shapes and the brushes we're using and all that stuff. All right, I've switched to the quarter inch flat brush some more concentrated green here. And I did allow this to dry. Sorry guys, the magic of a video. We're just gonna blot on these tree shapes. And I love using a flat wash brush because it gives me these beautiful geometric angular shapes that I can't get with a round brush. I don't have to try hard with this and I love that. Now I'm gonna use a more concentrated green it's green with probably some navy that was just on my palette and I'm just going to wet on wet blot in some of that darker shadowed side as this is all wet before it dries and that'll blend really nice. Now let's do a second tree. With that green gold, you're already seeing the light just from their, you know, you know, sunset just like shining on the trees and making them glow. And again, blotting in some of that color. So this is a second layer in our painting. Of course, it's the first layer for the trees, but what is gonna happen is we'll add in more details later when it's dry. 
and it's going to really come to life. So I've got my neutrals. When I say neutrals, I guess I don't mean neutrals. I really mean my, you know, kind of the dull colors, the navies, the blacks, the browns and all that for, um, for later. And we're going to use that for our, I always want to say stems, but for our trunks of our trees. Now I've got my sap and I'm going to be putting in some bushes here and you can already touch down at the bottom and add some shadows if you want. But I'm being very loose with this and I'm going quickly as you can see, leaving white space. I encourage you to work quickly with a loose style of painting, especially with a loose landscape. But if this is too fast, please pause and catch up. There's no worries with going back or taking it slower. So let's do a third brush, bush here, just kind of extending out to the left and that really nice medium shade is gorgeous and now we're going to grab some of our reddish brown and i'm going to do the palm tree so i'm not drawing a line straight up i'm just dabbing my brush and creating these trunks of these trees i do like that because it's giving me this wonky trunk now if you don't like that look it's kind of lumpy bumpy and let's have one go over kind of leaning over here to the right just for some interest let's do a third one in the middle maybe off centered there a little bit longer a little bit closer to the foreground you can always just do a straight line but i tend to like things to look kind of blocky look kind of painterly have those brush strokes that you can see and recognize and enjoy so painting palm trees are like my favorite thing and i've got a number two round guys i'm so excited and if you're not really sure how to paint palm trees just practice them they're so fun they're whimsical they're beautiful we're just drawing out some branches right now and then we're going to add in some of those little leaves we're making these into fronds of course and we're simply adding in these diagonal lines after we've added the diagonal branch, um, the main part, the middle of the branch, and then adding in these tiny little, like what, I, I don't know, what are they called? I call them leaves, but I don't know. If you wanna let me know in comments what you call them, that would be so helpful. Cause I'm always a bit confused. I know the whole thing is a frond, it's a palm branch. Anyway, either way, we're having so much fun with them. So I've got some darker green and then some lighter green too that I'm adding in for some contrast as well. But these are just fun and you know, you don't really have to think too much about the branches, just putting them in where you need to fill in some space and it's gonna look lovely. And they just kind of hang down and you know, they blow with the wind and all the things. And for me, they're very relaxing to paint. So let's go ahead and add in, just just do those, that middle part right now before we add in, I'm just gonna call them leaves, that's right and you can work fast or slow. I'm speeding up here because I'm just getting comfortable with making those brush strokes and they're kind of curving following that contour of that middle part of the, of the whole branch or leaf, whatever you wanna call it. Guys, if you are enjoying this video, please give it a like right now and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We have so much fun over here. Hit that notification bell so you know when I post and all the things. All right, we've got two more to go. So you can see there's a lot of light greens in this landscape right now. We don't have a lot of contrast. We have a lot of light because that green gold really makes things glow. Right now I have some darker green. So we'd say that's like sap green there. And, and the idea is that you want to add that contrast so that you're getting more of that 3D look and a lot of depth in your painting. So this one definitely um, adding in that second color is really producing that effect for us today. And if you want to go even darker, you can darken up your green with some brown or some black or some navy. And you could even add in some yellow on the tops to show that, you know, there's light all around. Of course, in the bottoms here, since that glow is coming from kind of where that horizon line is, since the sun is going down. So you really use your creative license with this and just paint it how you want to see it. Oh, these trees are such, such fun. So if you feel like you'd like to add in more palm trees than this, I, in my original painting, had four, and I thought I would add in a fifth one just to give that balance. We are doing odd numbers because that is most appealing to the eye. And if you have, say if you had four, your eye would be going and kind of, 
your brain just likes to pair things up and make them equal. So it would be looking at them, pairing up two and two, and then there's nothing else odd or interesting to look at in the painting, and it would want to move on. So if you have five, your brain is kind of going from pair to pair and then just going back and forth. It just looks more interesting if you add in odd numbers of flowers, odd numbers of trees, whatever your focal point is. So now we are going to do some more details. So I'm mixing up navy with that reddish brown and we're just going to do a really light dab on the left side. Now if you wanted to do the whole trunk you could because the light is in front of that tree so the back side would technically be in shadow. I'm just adding a little bit for some dimension and a little bit of um, you know contrast between what the color already was. So let's add in, let's see, I've got some navy. I did too much navy. Let me grab some of the, the brown color. And I want to start adding in some things at the base of the trees. We need to do our trunk. And I'm using that same quarter inch flat wash brush also. If you need more control than that, you could grab a smaller uh, round brush, like a number two with a nice point. And that might be easier, but right now I'm just putting in the trunks where I think that they would be. And then also creating just some roots that are coming out so that you can see it rooted well in the ground. And then with that curvature there, it looks like um, you're giving it, like the ground is a little bit raised where the, where the middle of the trunk is right there. So now we're gonna do some of that same illusion for our palm trees. So these could be roots, this could be shadow, and I'm going to curve it a little bit as we bring that color down with a damp, clean brush. So it looks like those trees are maybe sitting, we're just going to blend out that color for everything. Like those trees are sitting up maybe on a little hill. We can add a little bit more to that to increase that illusion once that's dry. All right, mixing up a little bit of that navy to darken up my sap green. Let's start adding in some shadow and contrast. So we're just going around. Look at these shapes. They're kind of like triangles in a way and lines. And I, I don't want to do straight lines because that's not going to look very interesting or realistic. We'll do some shadows up higher up on the bushes as well. You know, when you when you see a bush, sometimes you can see inside of it and it looks a lot darker. And that's the look that we're going for right now. If it's too stark with these brush strokes, you can always take a damp, clean brush and start to blend them out. But now I'm taking that kind of gray brown color and we're just emphasizing the shadows, emphasizing the hills. It kind of looks like these are hills here, right? It's giving the illusion that the ground is raised here. It's not just a flat surface. So that was a really light, watery mix of paint just to put in some marks and create some texture in the ground. Now with that really dark saturated sap green, we're adding in some of those mid-tones and those shadows. Just going around and you can blend it with a clean damp brush too, or you can leave those brush strokes quite stark as they look right now. I'm just doing a little bit of blending just to make it look a bit more natural. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of that dark paint. And as we're doing a little bit more of the shadow and the contrast with maybe just thinner marks, I want you guys to check in with your painting. How are you liking it? Take a deep breath. If you're feeling stressed at all, remind yourself this is practice and it's supposed to be fun. These videos on my channel are meant to be restorative and healthy and to increase your mental health. If you're experiencing trauma or frustrations, it's supposed to help calm your brain down as art does in general, but also just to give you a little boost of confidence and encourage you to continue to take care of yourself because self-care is so important. And when we do self-care, we're able to help care for others more efficiently. Just adding in some shadows on the tree trunks there. And I'm gonna take a number two round. We're gonna add in some fun little marks on the trunks of our palm trees next. And this is honestly one of my favorite parts painting palm trees, we're just gonna do these little slightly curved lines just to show some nice marks. And a lot of the times palm trees will have these markings. Sometimes they're kind of like lines and stripes and we want to emulate that. It just makes them look really, really pretty, more realistic. And it's a fun little addition that you can include. You can even include some coconuts, even though I'm not going to do that today but that's another fun addition to add into your painting. 
All right, remember to check in with yourself. How is your painting going? I hope you're enjoying it. I'm just gonna take advantage of having this really thin brush right now. And look, we're gonna add in a little bit more shadow with a very thin amount of paint. So you can see how we go from really large brushes, we downsize to smaller. And as, we, as I get smaller, at least as I paint, I get darker with the pigment. And that's where we're adding in those darkest darks so that we can have a lot of contrast and make sure that our trees and our landscape is all looking very much, um, you know, more realistic than if we had just a flat color, one wash, and that's it. Let's do some more contrast, especially at the base of the bushes. You're, you're gonna see a lot of shadow right there. Um, I was even, you know, I could have added in some shadows behind the bushes as well. You could do that. I, that's just not something that I thought of but there is still a lot of light and there's a lot of contrast that we're putting in. So just paint it how it makes sense for you. So I really hope that you're enjoying this video, that you've gotten a lot out of it. I hope that your painting has turned out in a way that is satisfactory. I'm just gonna darken up the shadow bits here underneath the trees too. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it is not too late to do it. Give this video a like and let me know in comments what was your favorite part and maybe a landscape that you'd like to see me paint next. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this landscape. I would call it simple. Maybe you didn't feel like it was simple, but I know that anyone can do it step by step. If you didn't like your result, try it again. I promise it's gonna get better. Thank you for being here. Happy painting and always happy mental health.